listeners and viewers at home. A very happy Sunday to you all. I welcome you on board to today's Bible study. My name is Dere Badeemi Ogumbeyi. I have with me, by my left hand side, the Reverend Colonel Olaniyi Ogundusi. Daddy, you are welcome on board. Thank you very much. And also by my right hand side, I have with me a uh, mommy, Mrs. Abimbola Olayeni. Mommy, you are welcome on board. Thank you very much, sir. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, I pray that through your word, O oh God, you bless every soul in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. And we pray that your name only shall be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today, our topic for our discussion is Christian in business. So we want to look at righteousness. So we want to ponder on righteousness today. And then our text is taken from Colossians 3, to 25. Slaves, obey your heartly masters in everything and do it not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our aim for today's Bible study is to let us know that righteousness is only standard measure for success. Righteousness is the only standard measure for success. Introduction. Conventionally, business is an economic activity which involves production or buying and selling of products and services in order to make profit. Business can business is an open activity where anyone can come in at any time with the aim of taking advantage of the society, especially where there are regulations which are not enforced from the uh, consigned authority. Most especially in our country. On the other hand, Christian in business simply means Christian faith at work. We are economic activities of a Christian in business are guided by principle by biblical principles and internal values which cannot be compromised. Then Let's look at the application of righteousness in Christian business. The first one that we'll consider is integrity. Some weeks ago, we have dealt with the word integrity. Today, we want to look at it in another, in another way. Because integrity is about Christ-centered living. It is about doing what is right rather than what is expedient. The organization with integrity will make its business decisions based on the standards and principle of God's righteousness. The principle that stands on truth and honest. That is, there's no difference between what the organization advertises and what it practices. The greatest way to live with honor in this world is to be what we really are. A Christian in business should be the epitome of integrity based on the biblical principles 
that plays a high premium on Christian values. And the second one is commitment to excellence. If an organization is to be recognized as an exemplary one, such an organization never forgets that God has called her to be witness to the lost world. As we have in Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18, that go to the whole world, preach, teach, and heal the world. So when business organizations commit themselves to the pursuit of excellence, they exalt the word of God. They demonstrate God's power to transform lives through their employees and their customers. I pray God Almighty will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Listeners and viewers at home, before we go to today's questions, you can WhatsApp us or you can reach us by sending your text message to this number 081 471 94912. Again, 081 471 94912. So, our first question goes to our mom, uh, Mrs. Abimbola Ola Yene. Mommy, in this 21st century, are there Christians in business? Thank you very much, sir. There are Christians in businesses. But let's first define who Christians are supposed to be, when they, whether they're in business or in their working places. Because even our working places, uh, marketplaces too. Christians are supposed to be people who have been called out of the world. They are people separated for God. That is people who have been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light, as we see in 1 Peter 2 verse 9. And Jesus refers to Christians as the light of the world. We see that in Matthew 5, 14 to 16. They are also found as owners and workers in industries, in manufacturing companies, and all marketplaces that deal with marketable products. And Christians are found working in businesses or patronizing businesses that are owned by people of the other religion. Okay. Thank you very much. That shows that uh, we still have Christians in Businesses. Yes. So Christians, though they're in this world, yes. So they're still partaking in businesses. In businesses. Well, thank you very much. Let me hear from our dad, uh, Reverend Colonel Richard Olani Ogulusi. Thank you, sir. Yes, many Christians are in many businesses. Just like the Bible says, we are in the world, even though we are not of the world. But there are different kinds of businesses in the world, and we have. Many Christians, men, women, young, old, that are into different kinds of business, and they are Christians. Okay, thank you very much. So, in a nutshell, we have Christians uh, that are engaging uh, in today's uh, businesses. Both thank you. Men and women. Both men, both young and old. And women. Both young and old. And old. Thank you very much, ma. Yes, sir. Uh, the, this question goes to our dad. Uh, Kano Olani Ogunusi uh, identifies some on Christian attitude in business. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, by on Christian attitude, we mean those kind of behaviors that is not expected of anyone that is called by the name Christian. Hmm. So it, it means uh, the attitudes. That should not be mentioned among, among Christians. Christians. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Continue, sir. This on Christian attitude, they come from just one source. The excessive pursuit of money to the point that one begins to worship money and to love money so much, which the Bible says we should not do. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, that the love of money is the root of all evils. 
So these had made so many people to be involved in things that are not supposed to be mentioned among Christians, like cheating, like cutting corners, like using unjust skills and uh, unwholesome uh, weights, unhealthy competition and rivalry. When there is so much competition that some people can even kill another person that is competing with them. And some still, some uh, engage in corruption and embezzlement, uh, and some in the, in the name of making profit, they make so much excessive uh, profits. Um, they buy something for a hundred naira, they are selling it for two thousand naira, just because they just want to make maximum profits. Then lying and swearing, firstly, some will, they will they will be lying and they will be swearing. They will be God calling out. They will be God, 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 God sees me. I yeah. bought this thing for five thousand yeah. naira. Whereas, whereas is lying and is uh, swearing. Mm-hmm. All these things are not expected of anyone by the name Christian. And some they engage in uh, seeking spiritual help, even from cultists and uh, and use of shams uh, to to for them to be able to prosper in business. And some will say uh, God does not uh, go against somebody trying to help. Some will even say what the Bible does not say, that heaven help those who help themselves. Yes, yes. Uh, in an attempt to help, they will go into all kinds of diabolical means in order for them to be able to make maximum gain in business. All these things are on Christian attitudes. And then slandering and destroying others just to gain advantage over them. You deliberately malign somebody, you tell lies against the person so that people can come to you alone. For, for business, all run, those things are run him down. Run him down. Uh, see, just that, that, uh, just that, push that him is down. That is fake. Yeah, it's fake. We are as we are we are as we are telling lies. All yeah. those things are on Christian mm-hmm. attitude. And some worshiping money. They they put they put money in the place where God's supposed to be. Uh, they would, some will even neglect fellowship and church. Even while a service is going on, they are pressing phone for contracts and for connections because of the worship of money. And some, after they made the money, they fail to honor God. Mm. They will not bring any offering to God. They will not pay any money to God because they think that it is by their own strength that they have made the money. And some, they will never help anybody with the money that they made. All these are on Christian attitude in business and so many more okay thank you very much uh our dad uh maybe i might want to just add, add to what things yeah what okay, you thank saying. you uh what uh, i think there are factories that now produce fake adulterated uh inferior substandard products and they send them out to the public and there are business people who even say, sell stolen items because it's cheap for them and they sell at exorbitant uh, prices. Um, some of our business people have no regard, no respect for the customers. And again, many of them do not pay adequate tax into the government coffers, which is not good enough. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, let's go to the question uh, number three. And that question number three goes to uh, our mom, uh, Mrs. Abimbola uh, Olajene. Uh, mommy, should Christians distinguish themselves in the business world? And then huh. if the answer <laughs> is yes or no, how? <laughs> because some people will say business is business. business. And the way we are talking about business minus God, <laughs> uh, to them, makes a standard business. <laughs> So Thank, you. Your view, Thank you very much. The answer is yes. Christians should distinguish themselves in the business world. And uh, this is because God commands it in the Bible. In uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15a, the Bible says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. And if we check 2 Corinthians 6, 17a, it says, Come out from among them. And be separate. Christians are expected to be separate in dealing. We are talking about righteousness. That righteousness must be seen in the Christians who are in business. Now, how? How do they distinguish themselves from the people of the world? Through honesty, integrity, and their contentment, which can be imbibed. They can only get this. Through consistently working at knowing God more and more daily and obeying 
the nudging of the Holy Spirit. They must be conversant with the power of the Holy Spirit to guide them in all their actions. Honesty. This is the quality of telling the truth, never stealing or cheating. Integrity is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, according to uh, the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. But a writer, Spencer Johnson says, and I quote, Integrity is telling myself the truth, and honesty is telling the truth to others. Hmm. Integrity. Me, come, come again. Integrity yes. is telling myself the truth. Telling myself the, the truth. truth. And honesty is telling the truth to other people. And honesty is telling the, the truth, truth to, to other, others. other people. Yes. End of quote. Okay. When we talk about contentment, it's a feeling of happiness and satisfaction in what one does. When you, you are happy with your business, you are satisfied with the little or the much gain you are getting from it. And this is different from complacency, which is a feeling of satisfaction with oneself or a situation without thinking that a change is necessary. Even if we are in business, there are times we need to make a change. But it, it does not mean that we should be complacent. But all the same, we must be contented with the happiness and the satisfaction that God is giving us in our business. Okay, thank you for that answer to the question. Uh, I'll just go straight to the question number four. Uh, and that one goes to Colonel uh, Richard Olani uh, Ogun Lucy. Uh, sir, uh, what are the challenges facing Christians uh, in business and how can we overcome such uh, challenges, especially in times like this. Thank you very much, sir. Um, the key challenge facing Christians in business this day is that many Christians, because of their being Christians, they find it difficult to play the dirty games like the people of the world. And um, because the, there are a number of things that people do and when a Christian who had fully surrendered his life to Christ is in such an environment, he finds it very difficult to cope. And the game is always, if you cannot beat them, you join them. So many, they are challenged to the point that they want to join them. They want to play the game like the people of the world. Sir, before you go on, sir, are you telling us, are you telling us that a business is a, is a dirty game? Well, um, it depends on how it is being played. Okay. Uh, because since it's a game of uh, making profits, uh, you know that um, a number of shady things goes underneath mm -hmm. a number of businesses. And so when we have genuine Christians in this kind of environment, uh, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It's a it's challenge. Nice. It does not automatically mean that the believer will play the dirty game. But that is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, another major challenge is hostilities from... Um, the business world because there are mafia in some businesses that we say we are the one that controls we are the one that dictates prices we are the one that sets the tone and so when you are a christian in that kind of environment uh, you, you may suffer persecution directly from these uh, people that may even uh, put a risk to people's lives so these are key challenges there are so many other challenges that a christian can face in business but Irrespective of the challenge, uh, the important thing is that the Christian must be Christian indeed. Mm. He must love the Lord. He must love the Word of God. He must read it, obey it, and listen to the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Let the Holy Spirit tell you when to invest, what to invest mm. in, and then live by the standard of God. And it's also advisable that Christians can form alliance with other Christians mm. for prayer and for encouragement, so that by this encouragement, um, you can have something good coming from your business. And most importantly, the Christian must trust God. You must not go into any occultic practice or go and join them to do any fetish things to prosper your business. Put your trust in God and the Lord will prosper your business. Listeners and viewers at home, put your trust in God in any business transaction you are engaged in. In conclusion, no matter how small your business is, God has a calling on our life. God knows 
a business strengths and weaknesses. And a business owner must seek God's wisdom to keep him from making bad business decisions. Like our dad and our mommy, as they have said, as they have told us, that we should trust God and we should always remember that we brought nothing into this world with little uh, profit. Let, 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 let that one be sufficient for us. Because when God Almighty, when He blesses us, we have more blessing, you know, to give testimony on it. So, as a business person, we must remember to trust God over uncertain profits. A biblical principle that applies to business as well as to life in general is to seek righteousness first. Mm. To seek righteousness first. An increase will come from God. That blessing will definitely come from God. So, a biblical principle for business as well as life is not to conform to this world. Though we are in this world, we are not of this world. And I pray God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go on our memory bus, I want to seek this opportunity to invite us to an head talk titled Mental Health Consequences of Lockdown. Issues and Solutions. This program, by God's grace, is coming up on Saturday, June 19, 2021, at our diocese sand camp, uh, Ashipa, by 10 a.m. Please, you are invited. Tell others and join us. I trust God that God himself will minister to our needs in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And once again, if you want to text message or WhatsApp us, you can only do it on this number, 081-471-949-12. Again, 081-471-949-12. So I want to use this opportunity uh, to sincerely appreciate our daddy and our mommy, uh, Colonel Richard Olani Ogulusi, and our mommy, Mrs. Abimbola Ola Yeni, for their meaningful and biblical contributions uh, in today's uh, Bible study. And I want to thank the studio crew, I want to thank the viewers and listeners for listening and watching uh, this program. This is my prayer that God Almighty will bless us together in Jesus' name. Amen. So for our memory verse, Psalm 17, verse 15. Psalm 17, verse 15. Psalm 17, verse 15. As for me, I will be vindicated. As for me, I will be vindicated. And we see your face. And we see your face. When I awake, when I awake, I will be satisfied. I will be satisfied. With seeing your likeness. With seeing your likeness. Uh, once again, I remain me, I remain yours, venerable Adeyemi Ogumbeyi. I pray God Almighty will bless us in whatever we do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Till we meet uh, next time. Remain cool, calm, and collected. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Mom. Eternal King of Glory, we thank you for the little time we have spent here looking at your instructions to all businessmen and women in our land. We ask that your word that has gone in will make them to profit more in you than even the worldly gains in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father in heaven, for Thank doing more than we have asked for. Thank you, For Lord. in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.